let's do a brief introduction to the boundary surface tool in the surfacing toolbar. So here I have a surface that I've pre-made. Let's click on the delete face. We're going to remake some faces. So we'll just delete these three faces here using the delete face option. Okay, so we now have a hole in our surface part. So I can use the boundary surface and um, basically select an edge for my start position, select an edge for my finish position. This is my direction one. And then for direction two, I can basically select a path. So if I right click and go selection manager, I can pick the edges along the part, along the boundary, to create a path. So let's select OK. So that's one <clears throat> section of my path, but I need a second one. So right click, selection manager again, and having a second path gives SolidWorks more data to work out the surface. So you can see it's matched up now to all the edges, but you might not get precisely what you want to begin with. And all these purple, purple lines and green lines are basically drawing aids that help you, um, help you to define how the surface is laying up. And we can make some modifications. So in direction one, we have this rollout. If we go down to tangent face, tangency to face, you can see the second edge under global has switched to tangent. And we can increase the tangency influence. The tangency influence is taken from that edge. So you can see highlighted on the drawing, the blue face is the face that's directly adjacent to the to the to the edge that we've pre-selected. If we go down to direction two, select tangency face again, you can see group two is highlighted with a tangency marker. So and on the on the model you can see that is at the base of the part. So the tangency influence is running along that second guide curve and basically we have 100% tangency flowing from that from that curve up around the part so it's enabled us to recreate that initial surface that we deleted at the start and the tangency option has allowed us to kind of modify the bend giving SOLIDWORKS information on how, how we want the surface to lay up. Let's now have a look at the lofted surface option in the surfaces toolbar. Let's go back and get rid of our boundary face. Let's delete the option and then roll the model back slightly to before the surface was deleted. So pre pre deletion, I could use some of the geometry. So starting a 3D sketch and selecting a couple of the curves, let's convert the entities and we can use these. If you didn't have these curves, you could always draw them manually, but they're, they're there for this tutorial. So I'm going to use them. So let's have a look at the lofted surface option. So we have profiles and we have guide curves. So in profiles, I'm selecting my start, my first profile, and over here would be my end profile. So if I draw a line directly from one to the other, I get a straight surface between, but I don't want to do this. So I can have as many profiles as I like. So here I'm going to select the two sketch entities, and then I'm going to select the far end. 
you see I've got an edge, two Oakman groups, and the final edge. Right, but now we need to add some guide curves, and this is much like the boundary surface toolbar. So let's go Selection Manager, that's a right click. Select one, two, three edges, and that completes my first guide. And now we need a second guide. One, two, and my last surface, my last edge, sorry. Click OK. So this is matching up quite well. And you can use this option when you want more control over the shape of the surface. I mean, the, these, I have four curves, so the surface is pretty uniform throughout, but you could change the shape and have transitions between each of the profiles. But again, just to show you, we can do tangency to face to kind of smooth things out even more. So you've got in the start end constraints, I've selected tangency to tangency to face, and this has selected both the start and the finish adjacent faces. Whereas previously with the boundary um, surface, it didn't. It just selected one option next to the curve. And there you have it, a different way of creating the surface. Let's try something a little different now. So I'm not going to try and recreate the surface we've deleted before. This time I'm going to try using the ruled surface feature. So by default, it's um, highlighting normal to surface. And if we click the curve, it shows a normal extrusion. We change uh, to the tangent surface and it's a continuation of the connecting surface. Back to normal. If we click taper to vector, we have to pick a vector, which in this case I'm going to pick a face, switch it, and we can taper from any given position, any given surface or plane, and I can adjust the angle. We're tapering from the top plane. So we're tapering 46 degrees. And we can adjust this until we get the desired angle. We select a few more edges. We're still tapering from the top plane, but we can move them together. So everything stays connected. Let's get rid of these. Perpendicular, perpendicular to vector. Again, we're selecting a, a line, an edge, a plane, and we're perpendicular to that particular that particular reference. So all the surfaces are perpendicular to that particular feature. If we select sweep, here I'm using the right plane as a reference. We're just basically sweeping away from that right plane, but we can change the coordinate system. So let's just play with some figures. Minus in the other direction, y is 1. And so we're moving in that direction. But you have to be a bit careful with this. You have to know exactly where you're going to use the coordinate system. But you can find a way around this by changing from positive to negative numbers and back again until you're comfortable that you're going in the right direction.